Y'all remember that line in 8 Mile when he's battle rapping and he says, pay attention, you're saying the same shit he said. That's what just happened. That's what happened with Nick Cannon. I was not going to make a video. I told myself, don't remember if I tweeted it, did I make it in like a, the community section of YouTube, but I said I was not going to make another Nick Cannon video. This is not a traditional reaction. You're not going to get the video or the audio in this video right now. So if that's not what you're here to see, feel free to click out. I know I'm gonna get dislikes for not playing the video and not playing the audio, but I ain't trying to waste another four minutes of my life. I'm not trying to waste your time, and you probably already heard it if you clicked on here, so I'm just giving my opinion. I just can't even fathom what's going through Nick Cannon's head as he's putting these tracks out. So Nick Cannon tweets out the tweet that he said about the invitations cancel, gets clowned on Twitter. Everybody's retweeting it. Everybody's throwing L's at him. That gif with that guy just like throwing L's. Got clown makeup. The whole works on Twitter. And for some reason he thought, oh, now is a great time. I should release this track. And then he puts the video out. And for the first two minutes, he's going over all of Eminem's old disses and reminding everybody how fire they were and how he basically fucked. The last thing I'm gonna do if I put out a diss record is remind everybody how I got my ass handed to me 10 years ago. He doesn't even remember the fact that the Source Records already tried to end Eminem's career with this same exact song that he puts in the hook of this song. Pay attention, you're saying the same shit he said. And the worst part about it is that this song was the most fire one of the three but the main subject of the song is race baiting. Something that Eminem has already 10, 15, 17 years ago, he's already mentioned. He's brought it up, said he was sorry, people change. Nick Cannon is probably the same person that's praising Kevin Hart for saying, I'm not gonna host the Oscars, I'm not backing down, I'm not saying sorry for something I apologized for 10 years ago. But on the flip side of the coin, he's the same person that releases this track, and he's talking about something that Eminem said 30 years ago that he apologized multiple times for. Now I will admit that it was like something that had never been done before using the audio. We knew it existed, but a lot of people had never actually heard the track. It definitely does come off as like jarring if you're hearing it for the first time, but you can hear Eminem is like 17 years old. You can hear that he recorded that like on a fucking Walkman. You can tell that that was 30 years ago. If this were the first diss track, you might have had a little bit of ground to stand on because lyrically, rhyme scheme wise, it was the best one of the three, but it was still subpar. He still has very basic elementary rhyme skills. You know why? Because he's not a fucking rapper. And you know what else he's definitely not? He's definitely not a rapper that has the capability and the motherfucking tools and the ammunition to put out diss tracks. You're the host of Wildin' Out. You're the host of The Masked Singer. Like, I can't take you seriously as a rapper, much less a rapper who writes diss tracks whenever you're talking shit on Twitter and then the next 10 tweets above it are all about The Masked Singer season finale. Like, that's not the way this works. He's just... We're gonna run out of L's. This right here, this whole Nick Cannon shit, this is the perfect way to sum up and end 2019. Cause the whole fucking year was a joke. God. Even if Nick Cannon put this track out as the first one, and this is the strongest one of the three, cause it's him by himself, as it should have been from the very beginning, not all these fucking clowns like out there trying to win your war for you. If he would have put this track out at the very beginning, this was the strongest one that would have potentially like gotten a response out of Eminem, but he would have still took the L because Eminem would have just been like, I, I destroyed all of Murder Inc. and the Source magazine. And this was their strongest argument. And here you are trying to resurrect that argument from the dead. Eminem would just have to tweet out that one part, that one little section, even if it's just a gif or jif or however you want to say it. Even if it's just that section about pay attention, you're saying the same shit he said. Because that's literally what this song was. It was a minute and a half of Nick Cannon roasting himself with Eminem's own tracks. I forgot how hard Warning went at Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. I forgot until he brought it up. Lord Jamar's probably like, bitch, I don't like Eminem, but he's he belongs in this house more so than you do. The worst bar of the first song was the Elvis Pussley line. And he basically said, I'm gonna take that bar, double and triple down on it, and make a whole fucking song that's about Eminem being white. 
fucking terrible. But yeah, that's all I got to say on the matter. If you want to go out there and listen to this track for yourself, or if you've already heard this track, consider my... You're welcome. I'm doing you a favor by not putting the audio in here. I mean, that's it. Subscribe, like the video if you like it. I, I, follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at the third earnest. Peace.